understand that we are the most intelligent, the freest, even though we still have oppression, we have freedoms that other people don't have. So the onus mm -hmm. is on us yeah. to be the leaders. Even if they are disrespectful, even if they don't understand how important our leadership is, same argument that I that and black man unfiltered and Mandrell have heard these words before. Same thing I was saying yesterday. It's the onus is on us as the leaders, as the better people. And these are sizable books. They are minimum two hundred pages. Uh, you can download them absolutely for free. Uh, by simply going to, for example, this one, you just go to getmymarriageback.com, smartrealestatewholesaling.com, uh, realestatemoneysecrets.com. So yes, I am a three times author, and those books are out there for your for your consumption, and they are also available everywhere on Amazon, anywhere that you pick up books. So in case you prefer a physical book like that. Okay, so there's this very important conversation that I think I should add on to. There is another video on this platform called the, what is Akata, right? And I said to be deleted. It's right here on this channel. But uh, um, the, my brother, I want you to go follow him. Let me remove the cap, <laughs> okay? Uh, I want to go follow Black Men Unfiltered. Um, but there was a conversation earlier on today on this platform and I was paying attention. I was working in the background, but I was paying attention. Uh, so shout out to Black Man Unfiltered. Uh, go watch that. I'm trying to remove the cap. That's all. Just trying to remove the cap. All right, great. <laughs> right. So uh, there's also this video. Shout out to Vlad TV. Vlad. Uh, there's shout out to Godfrey. But I'm about to call Godfrey out on the bullshit. Uh, Godfrey, like many uh, Nigerian kids that are born uh, born here and raised here, they don't know any better. Okay. Uh, they're pandering. Okay, they're pandering. And pandering, um, pandering works to a certain extent, but you know, you know, I, I'm the, you know, uh, if you call it, I will be the one that you will call I'm pandering. But sometimes, uh, I don't mean pandering that way. I'm just basically just joking when I say that. But when you're pandering without actually know what the hell you're talking about, this is going to be an example of it, right? This is an example of it, and that's what I want to call out here. You know. Um, so there's the um, there's this idea that um, Africans hate Black Americans or Black Americans hate Africans. It's bullshit. Okay, a lot of the examples you're going to see are anecdotal. Okay, my personal experience is that I encounter extremely nice, foundational Black Americans. Okay that's the kind of people i attract anyway okay and not only that i know how to relate with people without you know offending them or saying the wrong thing or you know entangling myself in matters that doesn't concern me obviously we launched our live sessions with uh, the conversations around um uh, the immigrants and stuff like that right but you know, uh, some of this stuff still keeps coming up, and, and I want to call Goffrey. Uh, I want to call him to order here, or anybody like like Goffrey. I'm not sure if you ever ever see this, but I want to call them to order. Uh, it's too much pandering going on from Africans to Black Americans. Uh, they, it, those that have made up their mind that they're not gonna like you as an African won't like you. That's the bottom line. Okay. And those that are open-minded, shout out to White Jesus who stopped by a few days ago. Those that are open-minded are open-minded. Shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. Those that know how to read on both sides of the thing and understand from both sides, they exist. And those that have made up their mind, they have the right to do that as well. But the last thing I'll be doing is pandering to them or trying to appease them. Because I can detect that in one second and I refuse uh to waste my bandwidth or energy on that it's just not worth it okay but this video is for africans who think pandering is going to help them win anybody over okay so let me play this video for you and, and then we'll take it from there because if you remember the movie sugar hill yeah and there's a scene yeah where they're doing the thing with the drug dealer and the guy said we can't work with akata we can't work with akata that's a that's a word that they were calling the american blacks akata the nigerians Akata is a word that they use for American blacks and West. So first of all, that's bullshit. Okay, 
most Nigerians that use that word, let me first of all be clear. I think Nigerians should avoid that word as we move forward. Okay. Most Nigerians that use that word, most of them, not the ones that are loud on the internet, most of them, they are referencing foreigners. You don't have to have, you don't have to be in the America. You don't have to be in America. You could be in London. You could be literally next door in Ghana. And suddenly you're an Akata. It's not Akata. It's not Akata. No, it's Akata. There's actually intonation to it. Okay. And of course, Godfrey, who is not raised in Nigerian, doesn't know how to pronounce it right. But because it's Nigerian, second generation, I guess, first generation Nigerian or first generation Nigerian American, he thinks he knows what we say. Right. And then not only that, he's projecting what happens in his own family on everybody and is creating a very unsafe place for all of us, including black Americans. OK, so let's be clear about that. OK not everyone like majority of people that use that word they use it to reference anybody who actually lives outside of nigeria they could be nigerian and you are nakata by default let's get the context right okay okay let me be clear we will never get it right that's why i think we should avoid it but those that stumble into this video i want to offer you a form of education and i'll create content accordingly as well okay Wesley Snipes was like, yo, what is this Akata shit you keep calling us? And the guy goes, we don't want to work with cotton pickers. And then okay, so him saying as a follow-up sentence, we don't want to work with cotton picker does not translate to cotton picker means Akata. It doesn't translate to that. There's no relationship between cotton picker and Akata. There's no, there's no translate. It's not even loose. It doesn't mean the same thing. Okay. Now, if you interpret it that way, because that was the follow-up sentence right after the sentence before that in the movie Sugar Hill, that's your fault. That's again how Hollywood can control your life and you don't ask questions as opposed to assuming and making assumptions. Okay. And here we go. Godfrey is making assumptions. So no, it doesn't mean cotton picker at all. Okay. I did another video that it actually means black panther and not just because they're calling people an animal is because after the movement the black panther movement from from a few decades ago okay when they visited africa and wesley beats the shit out of them and but it's the truth so african so now because wesley beat the shit out of him a lot of people are now walking around and say i'm gonna beat the shit out of you when i see these africans whereas you've never met an african that called you an akata to your face why are you doing that to yourself okay why are you doing that to yourself? Again, Nigerians, the majority of them use it to reference people that live outside of Nigeria, right? But again, it started from the whole Black Panther movement thing, right? And yes, it's the, the direct translation of it is wild cat, right? But that's because it was used in the logo of the movement, okay? Now, because it's so dangerous right now because internet is just dangerous everyone is running their own rhetoric they take one lie and they translate it to the next person as a truth i think it's better to avoid the word uh to avoid that word completely okay but just in case you find it useful i wanted to uh, from a person who speaks yoruba fluently i wanted to share that with you okay of course some people I've also put that into an urban dictionary and when you Google it, you will see, oh, it means cotton picker. No, it does not mean that. It does not mean that. Okay. Share this video with people who need to be educated, right? But with that being said, if you're an African, you're listening to me, stop using the word, including when you're telling everyone that your family says it to as a derogatory thing. That's your family. My family never did that. Most of the families around me never did that. And I'm not copying. I promise you, they never did that. Okay. They that your family did that. Stop projecting that on the rest of the world. Okay. My younger brother is married to an Asian woman. We didn't frown at her because she's Asian. Okay. Yes. Across the world, every human group would prefer to be married to their own set of group of people. That's every human group. That, that's not that's not something you can that Nigerians can monopolize. That's just human beings. Okay. Americans and Africans have always had friction. You know what I'm saying? 
But shout out to my brother, uh, Canadian uh, born Nigerian. Please, if you watch this video, I would like to bring you up sometimes to have this conversation. We got to set that straight. We're not helping when we continue to spew it or bring in, when we bring attention to it. Or, we don't need to bring attention to it at all. If they bring it up, there are better ways to answer that question or, or the question. All right. Um, I'm doing this as a once and for all type of situation. Again, I may end up deleting this, the, uh, at least as a standalone video, okay? If it brings, if it attracts too much negativity, it's not worth it, okay? Africans, and I know some Africans are gonna probably be like, I don't like what you, man, whatever. People were upset over this clip. This clip's- You could say whatever you want, Godfrey. You're gonna be the one to get stomped over your head for keep bringing it up. Because again, you lack, again, this is another lack of emotional intelligence. When you bring it up, even though you're explaining it, you're still bringing it up, right? So nobody asks you, and especially to explain something that you don't really know the real truth about it. Started Why? Going viral on Twitter. Why are they getting upset at that? First of all, it's the truth. All right, so let me let me share the next video here. Americans are really mean towards us. They're really nasty towards us because they feel they're better towards us. And I think it's the wrong attitude to take because I'm West African, but I was born here. My friends are African American and African. I think it's shout out to my brother um, uh, Jay Bones who was here earlier, and he had a different experience. But that's still an anecdotal experience. Everyone has their own experience. We really can't afford to be projecting on a whole group of people. Okay, we can't. Just like he had his experience of being bullied by Black Americans, I, I've never been bullied by Black Americans. I promise you. Okay. But he also said he went to high school here. I didn't go to high school here. I also have a sister-in-law who went to high school here. We had the same experience. Nonetheless, we really can't afford to be projecting these, ex these negative experiences like it's absolute, like everyone is just going through it. That's not true, okay? It's fucked up because here's the thing. Africa, like whether you say Nigerians or, or, or Ethiopians, or whatever, we were colonized by Europeans, man. That's a fact. We were colonized. We were treated like shit. Look at South Africa. With all the Dutch, they've shit on South Africa. But you know the problem? Even though he's saying the right thing here, some people are stuck on the fact that he said earlier that Africans hate black Americans. That's not true, right? Some people are stuck on that because that's that has more negative uh, emotions attached to it. We really got to be careful. Kins, man. And finally, I think South Africans, with the help of Julius Malim and all these, they're trying to take some of their shit back. Dutch people are fucked up towards fucking black Africans. And the fact that a South African, a, a white South African calls himself African to me is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I just want, again, as usual, I thought I should bring some, bring us up to speed on that. Let's see if there's any more here. I've had relatives, man, I'm not gonna name them. I've had relatives go, Oh, we're better we than African-Americans. I go, no, we're... N n like, that sounds dumb. People just don't come to you without some context to say, we're better. That's not how that goes. That's not how that goes. This is pandering. This is just pandering for no reason, right? Tell us more about the context behind the scenes, why they will say that. And I doubt if that was even said that way. You're paraphrasing. That sounds stupid, right? But maybe let me not speak for him. My family has never done that to anyone. My family, had, my father has never come to me and said, hey, we're better than some group of people. No. Okay? No. We're not. Because I was just stopped by the police the other day. And I'm going to tell you, I used to try to use that African accent. You know what I mean? When police stop me, I say, uh, I'm sorry, officer, what is the problem? I am not the same as them. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. If I get stopped by police, I have the same emotions that runs through my body. Okay? I'm praying that I get home safely to my family. I'm a black man. Okay? I'm not preparing to use a certain type of accent or for my accent to be a little bit stronger than this so they can let me go. That's not how that works. That's bullshit. Okay? And I have stories upon stories of Nigerian American kids that have been killed also. Yes. Here in the America by the police. Okay? So again, this is a very, very dangerous rhetoric. 
he's a joke star. He's a comedian. I get that, but it's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm I'm not gonna act like, you know. Of course, there's a a slight cultural difference when you're African because we have, because you know what it is. In Africa, usually they'll show African Americans in a certain light. So Africans will have this this concept of how Africans are African American. So again, shout out to my brother at uh, yeah. brother Black Man or Filtered. Uh, this happened earlier today, and my brother B9 was on it, and it's kind of sad that B9 sounds like he's a foundational Black American has to be the one to say this. Okay, it's kind of sad, you know, but at least he's saying it. So we can still uh, we can still believe that all is well, that everything will be well that uh we have hope right we have hope of unity right i want to say something real quick but we have to realize that the god said is that they will colonize just like me so what we have to realize is that we're arguing with the other victims on the other side of of the world we're all victims here ladies and gentlemen and we're not going to get anything solved if all we're doing is infighting with the victim with the other victim the problem is, is that we have to realize that this is not a system that they just built for America. This is a globalized system of control. There's a reason why they never brought the metric system to the new world. The metric system is the equivalent of respecting your flag. Mm -hmm. We don't respect flags here. We go off the mm -hmm. school system. We go off of inches and feet. So mm -hmm. because our system is different, we deal with black and white. We don't deal with flags. But you can be the whitest of white or the blackest of black. If you're born in Jamaica, from their system, you're Jamaican. End of story. Mm -hmm. So we have to realize that all of this infighting that we're doing, all of these things that we do to find a reason to separate ourselves from anybody that looks like us is their game. And Absolutely. they're winning. Absolutely. There's a reason why soccer was never brought here to America. Because they know that they this is the new it's called world. divide and conquer we they know exactly what they're doing what they call when we fight each other own version of football making when we fight each other it's all part of the white supremacy shout out to my brother jay bones he said that on the last session that we had here right it's all part of it the system is different so how we deal with each other has to be different yeah, we have to understand that we are the most intelligent, the freest, even though we still have oppression, we have freedoms that other people don't have. So the onus mm -hmm. is on us yeah. to be the leaders. Even if they are disrespectful, even if they don't understand how important our leadership is, same argument that I that in Black Man Unfiltered and Mandrell have heard these words before. Same thing I was saying yesterday. It's the onus is on us as the leaders, as the better people. If you claim to be the leaders, but yeah. I'ma still guide you out of this quicksand. I'm still gonna make sure that you You know, it's the same issue that we're talking about in a lot of the gender wars online. It's the same thing. If you're gonna claim to be the leaders, and you really want better, then you have to lead that. You have to lead. Yes, women, yes. If you're the one that is complaining about your situation, about your relationship, that means you have the leverage points. That means you can do better um, by learning what that person's momo button is and pressing it. It's called seduction skills, negotiation skills, right? These are things that you can employ some tactics and borrow some skill sets and use them in your favor to build the kind of relationship you're looking for it's the same thing same thing you know